everybody, welcome to the Ridgeway World. I'm Jeff, you're not. Today I am Dr. Ridgeway because I'm going to be operating on the Hustler 60 inch zero turn motor with a Kawasaki 27 horsepower motor. Uh, for like the last 25 to 27 years, this has been my springtime operation, whether I had the uh, Hustler, whether I had the Skag, whether I had the Bobcat, or whether I had a Snapper uh, zero turn mower or mowers. It was always maintenance that I had to do in the spring because I don't know if everybody's looked out in their yard uh, since spring hit. There's tufts of grass everywhere. Even though a lot of people don't mow right now, they always get their equipment ready. But I have seen some people mow. They're dedicated people that love to get outside and do it. But uh, for myself, I've always had the springtime set for, you know, for uh, tuning up my mowers. That was also the per perfect time to do mulch and fertilizer, but that's going to be another event. Uh, but again, today we have the Hustler 60 inch zero turn mower that I've had for I think eight years now, seven years. It has about 500 hours on it. That's how we uh, measure the longevity or life expect uh, expectancy of a zero turn mower or a mower in general is about the hours that you use it. So uh, this is about half life. Be, and basically now it's just going to be used for home use since I've got out of the business and retired. But today what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to start off uh, with my lovely camera person, Terry, who's back behind the scenes here and wanted to do this because she didn't want to have a problem like we had before where I go out and do things and never turn on the microphone. So she said she was going to take care of everything. Hello, hey. beautiful people. <laughs> You're not going to show your face today? No, it's all you, babe. Oh, okay. It's all about me, which I like. I always like it about me. So right now, I well, earlier today, I, I went to a place that I'd love to go, and that's the uh, power equipment store where I bought my mower from, and I always have to roam around it because they have a lot of products. They have the Hustlers. They have the Bobcats. They have steel products, which I've used steel products for my whole career, basically, in business. And uh, even though Jess hooked me up with an Ego uh, uh, battery-operated equipment, I still like to have my steel gas-operated stuff for chainsaws and things. But I love going through there. I'm like a, a, a child, basically, at Christmas again, which I always have a problem. But we're going to start out with the air filters. And I don't know if Terry can get in on this and look at this. This is the, uh, the first defense, the first line of defense for your, your motor, which this motor, this is an, a, a FX850V, Kawasaki 27 horse. So if, if this goes bad, you're in about three grand to replace it. So it's very expensive. So you always want to have good air filters. Now this is the external, this is the internal. So the internal is still in good shape, but I replace it every year anyway. Um, and But the external is cruddy as all hell and we're going to be replacing it. So again, you, if you go to your place where you bought your mower or go online, it's very easy to replace products. And again, this is the Kawasaki brand external filter. Now look at the difference between the two. Not horrible, but again, one season in dusty weather. Excuse me, buddy. Hi, John. And again, here's is the... Are you learning how to turn up a mower? Johnny's already known oh, this forever. Baby. And this is the internal. Look at this. This is a little bit different than the one we had before, but it's the same same type of filter and again this is not a bad one so I'm going to save this as a backup let's throw it off to the side and again these things have slots for them things so you're going to put your internal filter in first make sure it's in tight and then your external goes in right around it and there's there's going to be slots in there for that and it just popped right in and it's stationary so then we're going to put our cap back on it which slides right on and again, if I'm like rushing through this, it's because I've done it for 25 or 30 years. This is second nature. But back in the day... Okay, but try not to rush because they, for people who don't know how to do it... Right. Okay. And again, I'm wearing gloves because we don't want grease on our hands because Terry says, I want soft hands, <gasps> no grease on your hands when you touch me. Correct? Hey. Well, it's true. Okay, the next is going to be spark plugs. Now, back in the day, and if some of the older people in the, on, in the audience will know that you used to have the gap spark plugs. These are the uh, NGKs, which I'm very, I, I love using. They've, they've never let me down. And again, when I say gapping spark plugs. So you can get this stuff like at Walmart too, right? You can get it, yeah, just about anywhere. 
But back in the day, you used to have to put a feeler gauge or a micrometer, I think it was called, in between this part and this part. I forget the term. Somebody will correct me online if I say the wrong thing anyway. But you used to have to put a .030 in there, and you wanted the gap between those two for the spark to be perfect. But these are all pre-gap pre now, so you don't have to do it. But again, back in the day, you'd have to gap them, and then you'd have to tap them if they were too far apart to get them right. So they only sell them already done. Well, now. the NGKs now are pre-gapped. I don't know about the other ones because this is basically all I've used for years. And I'm not ready to do them yet, but that's going to be my next step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ratchet set, which I have the DeWalt ratchet set over here, which is um, my go-to thing. JT actually got me this set for Christmas, I think, or was it birthday? I don't remember. You don't remember? So, oh, I think it was Christmas. Was it Christmas? Yeah. So we're going to take the old spark plugs out. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So then you got to look down here for where your spark plug cable comes through. Now this is a twin I cylinder. See this? I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I hope you can. So sometimes they're so tight on there, you got to get a little helper tool. So I always keep a screwdriver around and pop this thing off. And again, sometimes it's just a pain in the ass and you gotta work it off. Well, where is it usually located? Is it, in the hardest. Is common knowledge or? Yeah. See, and I like right now, it's a pain because it's, there's very little room to get, excuse me, Johnny. I love you, buddy, but you gotta get out of my way. And there it is, it popped off. And, it, and also this is a piece of rubber with a, a metal clip that'll clip around your spark plug. Okay, can you see it in there? See that. And then the spark plug's in, in the cylinder. There we go. Sorry for the noise. Still too tight, we'll go back on. So these ratchet sets come in handy, huh? Yes, and that's a, and that's a, a, a multi-tool set. It's got you know it's got your wrenches, you got your screwdrivers, uh, and your ratchet set, which is good. Maybe I can see through here. No, I can't. So, but again, they never you know because these mowers are so tight to work on. And they, uh, they utilize every bit of space. That's why sometimes it's very hard to get to. Now I remember on the, last, like on the other side. Now here's, a spark, here's the spark plug. Now look how cruddy it is. Ooh. And that's gas on it right now because the gas comes in, it fires, and it pushes the piston in the motor to keep it going back and forth to make it turn. So we're going to take that item out. And we're going to put a new one in. How many spark plugs usually does a lawnmower have? Uh, a push mower usually has one. Bigger mowers have, or mowers will have two. So then you put it back in the same spot, and then you got to. And you should change this once a year. I've always changed it once a year. And then you got to try to make sure you get it in the hole right, without lube. And, it's, and, and then you're going to turn it righty tighty again to get it started there until you get it semi snug. Then you put your ratchet on it and tighten it back up. And now, know, not all mowers have that shield on it, so that it would be right. this tight to work on. Right. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put your rubber sleeve back on until it snaps and again it's a pain sometimes to get to but so wait wait a minute there. is there oil dripping is that why that containers under there no I was just prepping for it because I got to change the oil too oh okay. and that was that's the next step so now I have to go to the other cylinder which I'm trying to see which angle is best for you. Oh, in here? Yeah, see the other cylinder's right oh, here. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tight. So your other cylinder's right here. This is your spark plug. And again, let me get out of the light a bit, but that's right there. So again, it's a pain sometimes to get... Now, 
Now, what are you doing exactly? Are you trying to pop off? I'm trying yeah. to pop off the spark plug, the rubber that goes on the outside when it has the connection. And I don't know if you, I can try to get it over the top. Oh, I see it. Did you see the inside there okay. is the metal conductor that goes on the end of the spark plug. Okay. And what that does is that's where the current has to go through to make your spark plug fire. And once, like I said, that gas gets shot into the cylinder, the spark plug then fires and pushes the cylinder that way. It's just like a car. But there's different strokes, different sizes. And again, we're gonna to try to get in here without busting something because sometimes you can bust these things quicker than crap. So every time that you do, you do this, you have a hard time, don't you? It's, yeah, it's a, every, and, and every mower's different. As people online will t attest, But again, I've been doing this for a while, so it's like second nature. But in the past, I never had a, you know, had a lovely camera person in, you know, watching me oh, do it, so. So anytime I like busted something or did something stupid, nobody was watching me and they didn't hear me curse at the camera or, which God knows I've been known to do. See, the sad part is there's no way to get this thing off. And I guess you can't get your fingers on it, right? Not yet. There we go. So we'll see, and probably. It's hard to get in. Yeah. Good view. It's tough in there, but again, I'm. Sometimes you have to jiggle the spark plug around to get yeah, it you're out. Working it. Yep. Thanks, hon. <laughs> I've tried to work it for a lot of years. <laughs> but but this is something I love doing. I tinkering with stuff and messing with stuff is has just been something that I always love to do, whether it be. Mowers, cars. Look, Luna bought the oh, ball in here. Oh, she wants to play. Luna. Okay, here's the other one coming up, huh? Again, this is. Oh my. Yeah. This is the other. So we're gonna do the same process as we did before. Okay. Start it back in the spot where it goes, and it's go and try not to rip my gloves. And sometimes it's, it's and, and this is, I'm not joking here, this is sometimes So it's, say somebody just bought their first lawnmower. Right. Um, what's the best way for them to, to do it, you know, without knowing it all, you know, where everything is already, um, and knowing exactly what to do. Right. It's the same, the same kind of thing, you're gonna change the oil, yep. the air filters, and the spark plug, or spark plugs. And I guess what, they just look at their manual to find out where everything is yeah, if they don't know? Yeah, that's a good point because the manual's going to tell you everything about it, but most lawnmower places where you buy your mowers from want you to come back for their maintenance. So, and sometimes it's hard to get these things started because they're all on an angle. But yeah, most places, to do what I'm doing, the parts were 100 bucks. That's not including blades, and I'm not going to show the blade changing. Maybe some other time I'll do that. But I had already, I had already changed the blades in fall, and they're, you know, they're in good shape. So, um, and I, I don't like to use brand new blades in the start of a season. I always like to change them at the end of the season, and you know, after I do leaves, just sharpen them up to go through. But again, getting back to what Terry was asking about. You know, people, you know, knowing how to do this, a lot, a lot of places will charge you three, four, five hundred dollars yeah. to do what I'm doing right now and not having much luck inserting this plug in the so-called cylinder head. Right, so even if it ta takes you a few hours to do it, it's worth doing it. Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's always worth to try to try things on your own. Tuna! And Stop eating that plant! Sorry. That's all right. But again, I'm having, and, and, and after 25 to 27 years of doing this, I'm having a problem getting the plug started in the cylinder head, which is not a big deal because this is this happens, and like I said, everything's on a weird angle, and until you get this started. Well, plus you don't, it's not like your hands are real small to get in there right. either. Oh, there, I almost had it. 
Well, after with a little coercion, uh, extra light, I was able to get the spark plug and snapped it back in. So the next step is the oil change. So the oil filter is right down in the bottom here. I can't see if Terry can see it. But either way, I'm going to start the process of draining the oil. I already ran the motor. Can you, you see it from the bottom or the top? Yeah, it, it, I'll show you in a minute. But once I, because of Johnny, excuse me, buddy. Excuse me, buddy. Excuse me, buddy. Excuse me, buddy. So I already ran the motor. So because you want the oil to be warm and it thins it out, so it'll it'll drain easier. So on this motor, there's a there's a drain plug. I don't know if Terry can see that. If you want to come over here. I have an adjustable wrench straight down on the, on the, and this is a drain plug right here. So you loosen this up like this, like so. And if, if I can hit the, Ooh. okay. So, and then so it's going to, how do you know, is there a lot in there or should you always have like a, you always a should, gallon bucket under there? Yeah, because it, it's usually, no, John, that's not good for you. Get away. Away. This is 2.3 quarts usually with a filter. So what since we're going to be changing the filter, and if you want to watch John. it, John, quit nosing. Here is the oil filter. If you want to look over the top again, this is the oil filter right here. And this is a screw on. Okay. So once some of it drains down, I'm going to then take that off, make sure the rubber gasket is not stuck to the motor, which sometimes that happens. Look at John, he's laying right there in the way. Mm. We're going to check that, and then it's easy, you just run a little bead of oil over the gasket when you put the new one on so it comes off and on easier. Hey buddy, you're going to have to move. Cosme. Cosme, yeah. So again, lefty loosey, pretty tidy. And sometimes these get on there. This is the filter. This is the filter. And just like now, it is too tight on there to get it off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a big ass set of pliers and peel it off that way. So these are my big pliers that sometimes you need it. There you go. Did it break? That's what an adjustable wrench? Yeah, it's a big adjustable wrench to be exact. No, this is actually a set of channel lock pliers. Channel lock pliers? Channel lock pliers. Yep, that's what these are, channel locks. Okay. So we were able to bust it loose with the channel locks, and I'm going to try to get it out without dumping too much oil and making a mess. Now, what are you supposed to do with that oil that came out? The oil, I put it in five gallon containers after I put it in this, yeah. and then I take it to our local landfill, and then pour that... it in a recycling area. Okay. So what I was saying is, and I don't know if you can see it, all around here is a rubber gasket. And when you do oil changes in cars or mowers, sometimes that gasket will stick to, and tune is right to your left, so sometimes it'll stick to the car or to the mower. So you always want to make sure that's on there. So I'm going to set this right here for now. I'm going to get my new oil filter, which is another Kawasaki. And what we always like to do is you take a little bit of the oil and just rub it around the filter so it slides on, right on the rubber gasket. Okay. And then I'm going to put this over here out of the way since, so John doesn't get it. And then we're going to make sure that there's no debris left on where that rubber gasket sat on the motor. Because again, you don't want dirt and you don't want grime on the, getting into the motor. So you just make sure everything's clean when you go back on. And I don't know if Terry can see that. See this, this is a, a, a threaded shaft right down here. Okay. And that's where the oil filter is going to be threaded back on. And then we're going to snug it up, but you don't want to over tighten it. I always like hand tight is good. Perfect. Right there. And then you just wipe off the filter because you don't want any residual left on there. And right now, I am about complete with my oil draining. So I'm going to tighten that back up.
And that's the thing that you had to use the channel lock to open? No, just one wrench. Oh. Okay. Channel locks we use oh, on the filter. the filter. And usually, if you only put it on hand tight, yeah. it'll come off barehanded. But again, that was a little snug. So what is this right here? That is your oil filler cap. So that's where we're going to be putting... Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. That's all right. I'd rather have questions. It makes, makes things a lot, a lot easier. That means you're paying attention. So once I get this snugged up, then we're going to fill the thing. Because we already got the filter on. And we already have it drained. And how much do you have to fill it with? And what kind of weight is the oil? This is 10W40. I, always, I usually use SAE30 or 10W30 or 1040, whatever's I have available. So, but Kawasaki rec recommended for this motor for all these years a 10W40 synthetic. So, and that's what I get. You got a Ridgeway Colorado. Mm -hmm. Yep, someday we so will So what visit. do those numbers mean? Do you know? What's that? Of the, the weight of the, the thick, that's, is that the thickness? Thickness, viscosity they call it, and God knows I got this container all the way up to the edge. So this is going to be a very delicate juggling act to get it without spilling it. Voila. So again, take, take all your oil to the recycling center nearby because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to pour it into the system. You don't want to put it in the dirt. You don't want to put it in the water. So always make sure that you dispose of your oil correctly. So what we're going to do here next is this, as Terry was asking, this is your oil filler. And as you can see, your oil level. So this is the thing you check. And if you can see on it, add fill. Let's turn it around this way so you can read it. Add fill. So if the oil is low in it, you're going to have to add it so it's in between these two lines. It's just like your car. Now, I know a lot of cars are different, and a lot of people don't like messing with them, but messing with your car, messing with your mower, it's very similar. Well, it's probably scary the first time you do it, but right. then afterwards, it gets easier, I'm sure. Or, and as I said, SAE 10W40 Kawasaki oil. Okay. That's what I use. And, and usually it tells you in your manual yep. what you need. What if you put, what if you get a used lawnmower? I guess you just look it up. Yeah, you just have to research the mower and uh, you know research the motor, the size of the motor, and that'll tell you how many how many spark plugs it has. It'll tell you you know what type of spark plug. It'll tell you what type of oil. You really can't go wrong with the SAE thirty. So why? So now will this take the whole the whole container? This will take two of these. Now it says 2.3 quarts to fill the motor block if you change the filter. I always put two in and I've, and I've always been right, very close to fill on them. And if I need to adjust later and add more, I add more. So we're to the point where that one's empty. And so those containers, do they have the same thing? You have to get dispose of them in a certain... Uh, supposedly Wait, like you, you can dispose of, and stuff? supposedly you can dispose of these normally, but I, oh. I like to take them to the recycling center the same way that you would do the oil. But again, I, I got five of the five gallon containers that I keep my oil in, and then when I get like two or three of them, then I take so them to the recycling center. So you don't have center. to make a whole bunch of trips. Yeah, yeah. It's, and you do this slowly because sometimes if you don't, then it'll bubble out over top. And as you see, I got a little mess that I'll clean up after I'm done underneath. Yes, you do. Clean that up with what? With my rag. My trusty rag, which used to be your old tea towel. Oh, I think. is that why we have all these stains all over the floor? Well, stains from like that, stains from paint. So from the... if you would have laid something down first. Yeah, it would have been better. But again, this but you is don't really care I about don't really care because this is concrete, so it's not very porous and it'll you'll it'll wipe off. Okay, so we've done that. We've taken care of the oil, and we've seen that we put enough in there. What I'm going to do is once I get this cleaned off, and I wipe off my. 
stick, my measuring stick that goes in the motor, and then we're going to try it just to see how close they are. But again, we didn't start it, so there's not oil in the filter. Once I get the gas filter changed, then we're going to start it up and let it run. And so the oil can circulate. Yes, that is great and correct. So I'm just going to wipe off the, the shield down here. It's a, there's a black shield down here that had a little oil on it and this. It, otherwise it would what, just burn off Yeah, it would smell? Well, that, that shield really doesn't get hot, so it'll just smoke a little bit. Okay, so next we got the gas filter. Well, why would it smoke if it doesn't get hot? Sometimes, if, sometimes shields on mowers are different than this one, where they're connected to the motor, which will get really hot, and then they'll smoke a burn off. Okay, next we're going to do, we're going to do a gas filter. And if you want to get this. Now, I haven't changed the gas filter on this probably in two years, maybe even three. So you, so you don't have to do this one? No, I don't. Times. I don't like to change it all the time. Not that it's a pain, but I just don't like to do it, and I'll bring it up. See, this oh, is. Oh, it's in there. Yep, this is the gas filter right here. Okay. And again, it's been like two to three years, and I'm the, like I said, I've never been one to change gas filters every year. Probably should I, man? Maybe. So we got to find the clamps. There we go. So he's one clamp has been slid back. Well, I can't see the clamps, but I guess they can. Yep, right there. So you're gonna. I'm trying to be. That's all right. So there. So we pinch them together and we're going to slide them down. If I had another hand, it would have been good. There. Because as you see on the new filter, you're going to be sliding it into this and then sliding the, the clamp back on either side. Oh, okay. So. So is that the filter that's in, is it inside of that case? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's. I wouldn't stand too close because uh, sometimes gas sprays out. Mm -hmm. There's one. See, like there's gas spilling out all over the place now. Look, see it? Uh, so I'm going to stick my filter in there uh, to hold it up. Oh, you mean that was once white? The other one? Uh, yeah, I think this one was white. Yes. Different ones are different colors. I think snappers were red. But most of them are white. Okay, so if you have gas in there in your in your uh, mower, then you have to be quick doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, see it? Ooh. Gas all over the place. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Voila, we're done with that. So I we're going to put like, the. I do enjoy the smell of gasoline for some reason. Yeah, no, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. We put that, and then. We're going to bring this clamp back up. If I had a third hand, it would be really good. Bam. And that's it. We're back. Oh. We're good. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is I want my oil to be circulated, my new oil to be circulated in through the filter. So let's put our tool back. Snap that back. Boom. So Excuse does that me, mean you're going to start this? Yep, I'm going to start this. What was that, Tuna? Oh, was the well, you're going to scare the puppies. Right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I want to open this up so we don't have. And we kept all our loose parts in a box. So when I get rid of everything, it's easy. Okay, so we hope everything works well. So you're going to run it outside? Or... So we want the oil to work around the motor, the new oil, and we want it to get into the filter. So we want to let it run for a minute or so. Then I'm going to shut it off, and then we're going to do a, a test on the dipstick to see if the have enough oil in it. If not, then I will add oil, but most of the time, it's really good. So I'm going to give that one second, and then I'm going to shut it off. Okay, let me get my trusty rag, whatever I do with it, and we'll 
We'll bring the dipstick up. I'll clean that up in a minute. And you usually do that after you put new oil in, yep. let it run to circulate it, and then check the dipstick to see if you have enough oil in there. That is correct. And if it's low, you add more. You add a little bit more to bring it up between the crosshairs. Right. And it's very hard to see, because it see how clear it is? Yeah. But we have ample oil in there. Let me do it one more time. Right at crosshairs. Oh, we're, we're right at the full. I don't know if you can see it. Let me change. Well, I can't see it, but they might be. Able yeah. To. See right that little bubble? That mm -hmm. means you're you're right at the full line. Okay. So we're good. Okay. So I hope this has been informational for you and shows you that it's not that hard. If you take your time and patience and look at YouTube videos on how to do things or read the owner's manual, it'll make life a lot easier and it might save you a couple hundred bucks. And uh, in the comments, if you if you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, but, and again, it, it depends on the mower, it depends on the make, it depends on the motor. So, again, I hope it was informational. You know, everybody have a great day, and don't be afraid to try things, and have a good life.